Alors, euh, c'est quoi cet objet-là bah, C'est simple. So what is this object? It's a resource that ended up being positioned here. Ah, oh, it's a nice color. Well, in terms of color, if we go back a little, I'm going to go back to the res draw. I see that there was an optional color attribute, and the default value was 0000FF. So for those of you who are used to this kind of representation, it means a bright blue. So we can work on this by adding another color to the res draw. So any optional attribute has a default value. Yes, and it is known, it is uh, shown in the specs, and that's the blue value. So what would be your favorite color in hexadecimal? I like 46, 98, FF. And everybody knows it's your favorite color. And let's discover what it is. Hey, nice. That's a very nice color. So we've changed the color of this resource. Let me say I probably mistook one color for another. Don't you believe this is one of my favorite colors? Anyway, privacy is respected here. Okay, whatever your color. No, I don't like this one either. Okay. So, we've placed, we've put a first resource in place. Now, if I look at the rendering canvas, this is what it looks like here. So, I'm quite happy with this, but it's not very useful. So, what else could we do? That would be simple. Well, maybe we could try and understand the stacking of the layers one on top of the other. That can be of interest. So what you're talking about is adding a layer. Yes. So what we can do, and that's going to be quite easy, and it's using the same elements, we can start producing a second layer based on another resource. Okay, so let's define another resource. So I'm fed up typing, so I'm going to cut and paste, and I'm going to paste the res draw that I just wrote, modifying it. It's going to be res draw 2. So of course it needs to be one single identifier, and this one is going to be smaller. So 300 by 400. And what else here? An ellipse to keep it simple. Why not a rectangle? You want a rectangle? Okay, let's go for a rectangle. Stroke equals off. So I have a surface and another color. Well, I don't know. 60, 25, double O. So I've just defined a restaurant. What's going to happen? Nothing happens. Because I've prepared a resource which I've not included in a layer. So immediately I, play, I, have a, I write a second layer called layer, layer 2. I'm not going to change this. I'm just saying that this is a second resource and I'm going to leave it in the central position and I will just add, okay? And what happens now? Hey, nice. Oh, I chose a nice color this time. Yes, it's a very beautiful color. It's not exactly the same I have on my screen, by the way. But for me, it's slightly brownish. For you, it's slightly purple. But anyways, so and you can change the color if you want. Well, I'm not very smart with these uh, values. But there are very nice converters available online if you don't be as stupid as I am. 
Okay, this would be red, this would be blue. Let's try and go for... Okay, this, this one. Well, not very nice, but it's very large. So you might think, okay, this square is real big. So I want to make it shorter. And I'm going to move to 200 pixels in height to make it smaller. So now, what's interesting is when you've added a layer on top of another one, that's kind of neat, but what would happen if it was to be bigger? So we can try and position it differently. So I'm going to try and find a second way of presenting the layer and of aligning the resource in the layer. And you remember the align attribute that we've not used so far. So this align attribute is something I'm going to activate. The order of the attribute doesn't matter. We have them here in this order to make it easier to follow, but it has no importance whatsoever. So let's align it according to its to the bottom left. So instead of middle center, I'll write bottom left. And I will say Okay, I'm going to position it. So in the rendering canvas, if I could look at my graph. Okay. So I've decided to position my square here. So my coordinate point is going to be there and it's be aligned from the bottom of the resource. So my objective is to place my square here on the bottom left edge. Okay? So now coming back to my code, the coordinate x is 0, the bottom most point is 480. So what I expect is oh, disappeared. And Véronique says, you're right, you're not allowed to put a comma. Line 12, column 70 is not one of the possible values. And that's a problem because it comes from the specifiers. I think they should have slept a bit more, maybe. Okay, Damien, you need to update this. So here we're learning real time that you need to, you need to put a comma. So all the values of the line, so up until tomorrow morning, you have to realize that all line values have to be shown with uh, a dash. But the validator knows exactly what it needs to do. It's going to accept this change because this is an evolution, typically an evolution in the specification that was uh, uh, activated over the last few weeks because of the feedback that we received. So you have a value here that was a historical value for the tuning of the line attribute, which is obsolete now. There you go. So, here, we have this small rectangle exactly where I wanted it to be. And I'm deciding to position it slightly more to the right and slightly more to the top by 40 pixels. So I'm changing the alignment so that you can see better. This is what I wanted to show you. So Jean-Emmanuel and then maybe we can take a short break so that people can think. But what I wanted to show you are the various combination modes available for layers because this is one of the things which is very interesting in terms of construction. The first thing in combine we have four values add, clip, cut out, enter. So let me write a clip here, 
and let's take a look at what's uh, going to happen. What happened? This resource, which I added through my second layer, has not added a shape to the Frogan site, it just used the transparency in the previous resource in order to combine. So maybe you might tell me what's the use of it. Well, with the add combination, I can build the surface of my Frogan site and through the clip combination, I can use existing shapes and use this as to include elements. So now maybe I want to move towards the third or fourth possibility very quickly so that everyone understands the way it works. Cut out by instinct. I think people would think, oh my god, what happened? Well, I just emptied, cut out what I had drawn. And this is where color is no longer useful. The color that we'd created, FF8000, is no longer used. Because the cutout is just cutting out. And the third is third mode is enter. Enter. On retrouve un peu le, le fantôme. Where we have the ghost of the ellipse. We have the uh, shape here that corresponds to our second resource and it's the intersection of both that survives. It's the intersection between the two that uh, remains. We've also kept the color of the first one and the intersection that was made with the in second layer has kept the color of the first layer. So, let me go back to the add function vous représenter, revenir à mon point de départ. Et puis, so that I can get back to my starting point. Avoir une vision, euh, and de ce qui est en train de se produire, je vais in order for you to understand what's going on, I'm going to try an opacity attribute on this second layer. The opacity which is offered in the layer itself is one of the attributes that we left aside earlier on. That's an integer number between 1 and 100, and by default it's at 100. So for this second layer, I decided that opacity would be at 50%. Let's take a look at what happens. So we've just added the second layer on top of the first, so it's no longer in the same color. Not any nicer, really, but if you take a look at this part here, this part is semi-transparent. It's 50% transparent. So now you're going to ask me, Jean-Emmanuel, I'm quite certain you've already made a simulation. And what would happen at 75% on the first one? Could I get something different than just this big blue ellipse on the screen? Well, yes, look, you can make layers which are not fully opaque. They have any shape you want, but they can have an opacity which is not total, and they can include transparency. So I uh, wrote 75%, but you could decide you want something even more transparent and you see here that the blue ellipse is really very transparent indeed. So it's the overhead projector that gives a bit too much light. On my computer it's better. Okay, yes, we can see the ellipse coming by. Back. And on the OHP, I see there is a certain level of misalignment. I see this white line that does not appear on a standard computer screen. Yes, and you can all try on your own computer. 
Yes, yes and over, over the break you can take a look at my computer. So of course I can come back to total opacity on my second layer so that we have this beautiful brown color which is back here. So we can combine different layers. As you've seen, the first layer is behind the second comes to the front in the order as defined in the document. Okay, but the question is, what, hap what would have happened if things were different? So I'm going to reverse this. I take the second layer and I place it on top. I save. What happens? So, save. There you go. There was... The, the positions have been reversed. What used to be the second layer is now underneath. And this is one of the important rules to compose the layers in a Frogan site. The order in which they're defined in the document corresponds to their placement in the depth of the site. The first one being included sitting behind all the others. Okay, I put the opacities back at 100% and you see that? Yes, my brown rectangle is at the back now. Okay, thank you very much indeed, Alexi. We are going to take a short break and let's take five minutes. At the beginning of our session, when we get back, we take some questions and we finish off this session. We Maybe we won't have time to see all the elements and all their attributes, but the documentation, provided there is no further mistake in the documentation, but touch wood, uh, you can try and then we can try and organize a short marathon and show you as many elements as possible so that you can understand what you can do and then we'll learn how to create buttons and how we can navigate in a frogan site thank you